The rendering capabilities of ZBrush have been significantly extended in ZBrush 4. This is made possible by the addition of the Best Preview Render Mode. Best Preview Render Mode allows for subtool transparency, ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, and many other advanced rendering effects. In this movie, I'm going to demonstrate a few of these options, starting with subtool transparency. To make a subtool render as transparent, the first thing I need to do is go into the render palette and make sure that the transparent button is activated. You'll see that there is a BPR transparency sub palette, which gives you controls for adjusting the way that the transparency looks. The next thing I need to do is go into the subtool palette and activate the intersection icon. Each subtool that has this icon activated will render as transparent when I do a best preview render. Once I've enabled this, I'll go to the right shelf and click on the BPR button and this will create a best preview render. In the BPR transparency sub palette, I can adjust the refraction settings to make the transparent object look more like glass. Another exciting feature that's been added in ZBrush 4 is the Create Maps option. When this is activated, ZBrush will extract render passes from the Best Preview Render. So I'm going to turn on the Create Maps feature, and then I'm going to do a Best Preview Render. And then when I go to the render palette, at the top there are icons for each of the extracted passes. So I have color pass, depth pass, a shadow pass, an ambient occlusion pass, and also a mask pass. All of these are rendered with uh, high quality anti-aliasing, so they can easily be composited in Photoshop or After Effects. To save any of these passes, all I need to do is click on the icon. In this example, I'll enable ambient occlusion. You can see how this is rendered on this gun model. One of the most exciting features is subsurface scattering that can now be rendered within ZBrush. A quick way to get a uh, subsurface scattering rendering going is to go into Lightbox and open up the SSS Demo Soldier project. So I'm just going to double click on this and it will load into ZBrush. And when I do a render you can see that the subsurface scattering is already set up on this soldier. And now since the SSS Demo Soldier project has all the lighting materials set up I can just load one of my own tools and apply the same materials and lighting to that and do a render. To set up a subsurface scattering render, you need to have a few things activated, so I'll demonstrate these very briefly. First of all, in the light palette, I need to have at least one of the lights with the SSS button active. Now if you notice, in this case, I'm choosing this light down in the bottom right corner. This light is not actually turned on, but it does have this SSS button activated. The next thing I need to do is go into the render palette and make sure that the SSS button is also on. With this set up, I can choose a material. In this case, I'll just use the skin material that came with the SSS Demo Soldier project. So you can see that this material is made up of three shaders. I have two standard shaders and then the fast overlay shader. Above the shader modifiers is the shader mixer, which controls how the three shaders within the material are blended together. And by blending the shaders together, you can create the subsurface scattering effect. And I can adjust settings like the Fresnel, the uh, subsurface scattering. I can also control how the materials are blended together using blending modes such as normal, lighten, darken, multiply, average. Choosing different blending modes is going to give you different effects as I create the subsurface scattering effect. Using this workflow, of course, you can go beyond standard subsurface scattering effects and start to create your own unique rendering effects.